From why washing machine doors extend inwards, to what happens if you live in your bathtub for a week, my name is Starlink, and I'm here to answer everyone's burning questions about life. Hello again, it's me, Danger Dolan. What happened to your tooth? That's a good question, Darlink. But a better question is what happened to the truth? In this episode of SBD ASMR, I have purposely maimed myself in order to tickle your eardrums as I blow it up with a super slippery serenade of succulent truce. You fell over and broke it, didn't you? <clears throat> what happens in the brain when you draw a blank on a name, place, or thing? Think of your brain as like a library. The more times you check out a book about a person, place, or thing, the easier it is to find it on a shelf. However, books can be misplaced or become lost if you don't use them very much. If you're trying to remember an actor's face or name but you can't, your brain is trying to find the book. Once it remembers the book's cover or name, all the information inside will be accessible from then onwards. Additionally, our brains contain something called inhibitory neurons. If you didn't have these, then your brain would try to systematically remember every single person you've ever met when trying to think of someone. This process can malfunction though, and the information you need will be blocked or inhibited and worse yet, the harder you try to recall the information, the more it'll become blocked. Once you let your focus drift and think of something else though, the inhibitor may disappear and you can recall the information again. Yeah, nah, your brain is busted. It's so far out of date, it's running Windows 95. You can only manage one thought every hour without overheating. Your relic, a museum exhibit. What you need is an upgraded Dolan operating system. Open your mind, unlock the power of truth, You'll never blank again, because each thought is fact. Cheese is harvested from yellow paint. Your brain is one giant inhibitory neuron. Don't be ridiculous, Melissa. What? Did you call me? Oh. No, I meant Darlink. That's weird. I mixed you up with someone. Here. You need more brain juice. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Affirmative. I am well prepared to deliver unto you the next Galaxy Brain question. Why does old software get buggy when it hasn't been updated in a while? Shouldn't it have the same amount of bugs as when it was released? If your computer is exactly as you bought it, with no internet and no new software introduced, then you won't encounter new bugs. Not unless the computer's hardware fails in some way. But if you're introducing software updates of any kind or other programs, bugs will appear as the writers of the code couldn't possibly conceive every single possible outcome in the future from conflicting programs. Therefore, software needs to be updated to keep up with every other piece of software it will interact with, or bugs are inevitable. Every device you own contains a hidden program that will slowly introduce bugs and corrupt your files. It'll drain your batteries, clog up your data, so gradually you'll never notice. Kind of like when a lobster puts you in a cooking pot and slowly cooks you alive. Companies do this so you'll always upgrade to the latest model. Otherwise, we'd all still be using iPods and CD-ROMs. This is indisputable fact. Why is it not possible to build bird-like attachable wings to allow people to fly or glide around? Flight is fine when you're a small bird, but scaling up to the size and density of a human is where the logistics start to fall apart. You would need to significantly increase the size of wings to that of a hand glider far beyond what comparatively weak human muscles are capable of supporting. Birds also have four times the lung capacity and are much more efficient breathing at high altitudes. Interestingly though, if we were to put an air-filled biodome on the reduced gravity environment of the moon, flying would be much more possible there. There is simply no need to build attachable wings when you can grow your own. If you concentrate real hard, the magical and delicate process will begin. Watch. <gasps> Whoa! That is... so sick! I love it! Everyone can do it. Even you. Oh, you better believe I'm trying it tonight. Huh. I thought you could already fly. For the last time, I am not a bird! I never said you were? Oh, it's okay. She won't hurt you. If we can invent a cup that keeps water cold or hot for hours, 
Why can't we build houses with the same material? These are typically known as vacuum flasks, and it's not feasible to build an entire house like this. If you did manage to create a perfect vacuum enclosed house, then sure you could prevent any type of heat transfer, but it would do the same thing for air and moisture. Your drink might not need oxygen, but humans typically do. If you wanted to build a house like a cooler though, you actually can, and they're known as passive houses. These typically have super thick walls and come with a variety of benefits such as continuous insulation and solar gains. Actually, we do have these, we just call them coffins. If you've never lived in one of these before, I highly recommend it. Nobody bothers you. It's a vacuum sealed, so the temperature is always constant. Sure, there's no airflow, bathroom, food, or water of any kind, but you really can't complain when the housing market has inflated this much. They're great for storing victims and people you don't like. Out of sight, out of mind, as I always say. Indeed. What? How do we know there are 7 billion people on Earth if there are unregistered births? Almost all countries of the world have at least a functioning birth registration system. From that we can extrapolate a pretty accurate number of people currently living in the world. Of course this doesn't take into account unreported births, false reports, and the homeless or forgotten. But even so, whether we're off by just a few million or hundreds of millions, it's still within the standard statistical deviation and we still have a decent ballpark of how many humans are currently on Earth. Every device in your home from your webcam to your TV, your phones, tablets, voice assistants, and even your microwave are watching and cataloging everything about you. Your fridge knows what you've been up to, your darkest secrets. No matter where you go, the government knows who you are. Not unless you put your phone in airplane mode. That's the only way you can go off the grid. Wow, Mr. D, where did you go? You don't exist anymore. You're a ghost. That's nothing. Wait until I go behind a VPN. Peace. Why do washing machine doors extend inwards? Wouldn't there be more room if they were flat? The main purpose of these doors is to prevent your clothes from getting trapped when you close the door and the machine goes through its cycle. It also helps distribute the detergent more easily because clothes will fall from the top of the dent and land in the middle bottom, which allows them to scrub more easily and thereby clean off grime more effectively. The extension inwards isn't necessarily wasted space either, because if it were flat and you could fit more clothes, they wouldn't come out cleaner because there's not as much water per clothes. Nah, this is because you bought a cheaper washing machine. I learned my lesson after getting stuck inside so many of these things, so mine extends outwards and the interior is so vast it takes up several rooms. It's so big you can bathe in it and rent it out on weekends as a fun rotating pool. When was the last time you looked at your electricity bill? I look at it all the time. Well, you're not implying I should pay it are you? It's a scam. Why should I pay for electricity when I can't even see it? Hmm. So here's a not at all related follow up question. What happens if you live in your bathtub for a week? Although it seems like it'd be harmless to float in water for a week straight, the reason your fingers start to look like a prune is because of vesicles. Little bubbles trapped between the two layers of skin, the epidermis and the dermis. If you stayed in the bath for days, these vesicles would eventually burst. Your skin would literally begin to peel off. And if that's not bad enough, assuming the bathwater hasn't been changed in a week, you'll be swimming in a pool of your own bodily fluids, infecting your newly exposed flesh. This isn't even mentioning the sores and blood clots from being in one spot for days on end. Overall, it's not recommended. There's only one way to find out. Darling, I challenge you to a week in the tub. The loser will earn the title of cringe. Not a single chance. I have way better things to do than sit around for a whole week. Yeah, I guess it wouldn't be fair. You are pretty much just a kid after all. Run the taps. Okay, here are the rules. No leaving the bathtub for a week. And go. Oh, what is happening? Too cold. Ah, uh, that wasn't so bad after all. So, how did yours go? You did keep refreshing the warm water, right? You didn't just leave all that 
ice-cold original water for a whole week? Oh, gross! How are houses over 100 years old still functioning and livable? It entirely depends on the materials used and whether the house has been maintained for all that time. If maintained, then there really is no expiry date for a home. You can repair or replace as much as you'd like for hundreds or thousands of years. But to more accurately answer the question, extremely old homes still standing were made out of robust material that age well stone and masonry that can last centuries. A lot of houses these days are built as cost-effectively as possible, which means using materials that didn't exist back then like drywalls. But even drywall typically only lasts around 70 years. This depends on how many human teeth were placed in the cement during construction. Me, aside from my own, I tend to use three to 500 just to be safe. If you don't have that strong dental foundation, your house won't last two weeks before the plaque and tartar builds up and before you know it, cavities. If you're uncomfortable with how many children you have to rip teeth out of to get this number, consider using kidney stones instead. They're plentiful and they are easily harvested from orphans. By the way, where did you get this ASMR mic? If you must know, it's a precious family heirloom passed down hundreds of years. No. Don't use it! Hello, my name is Darlink, and I'm here to quench your thirst for knowledge. <laughs> so gather around and prepare yourselves for a healthy dose of delicious facts. Yeah, well, my name, my name is D Dolan, and I'm here. I said, I said I'm here to hey, stop shoving. I'll blow your minds. Stop it! I lost the tooth for this. It's me, Dolan. No.